Neville has an extraordinary ability and talent for getting the best out of musicians and he is charming as ever to the soloists. He can always light a fire up behind us, behind our backsides to make sure that we are playing always the best. And, and he has truly created an extraordinary legacy. He's completely synonymous with the orchestra and so he's also an amazing encouragement for the orchestra. He's someone at the back saying, well, you know, this is what I've given you and get on with it. Uh, it it's, a, it's a great presence. It was the first time I played with the Academy with him was in about 1965 and I've played frequently and regularly since then so it's a very familiar experience and I think we both know each other's idiosyncrasies. I think he really believes the music can speak for itself. He likes precision certainly and clarity and um, perhaps with his influence I also like those characteristics. In many ways it's like performing with family. Um, we know his style, we know his idiosyncrasies um, and we have enormous respect for him as well. I think he's a very um, warm and very uh, insightful influence. I, he's like a ship's captain to me. I see him steering us um, out of trouble and he's very much with us, one of us. Neville is quite capricious, a very sharp mind, and um, he always keeps you on your metal uh, all the time. You can't relax, he must be absolutely precise. And I suppose this has come from doing all the recordings over the years. Um, he's so um, on the ball. That's what I would say, on the ball. I'll never forget my very, very first uh, Beethoven 9 with Neville in the Usher Hall in Edinburgh. Um, I just couldn't believe how unanimous and focused the, the orchestra was and still is to this day. <laughs> first memory is when I was 14 and my father brought home two LPs. One was called World of the Academy Volume 1 and the other one rather snazzily was called World of the Academy Volume 2. Had a very young, very handsome picture of Neville Mariner on the front and the other one was a picture of the church. And I was completely bowled over by this <clears throat> sounded new sound to me and I remember saying to my teacher William Pleath at the time had he heard of it and he said yes it was a new wonderful orchestra started in London and I said well I want to play in it and he said well if you work hard you know you will and 21 years later I became a member of the orchestra. During the late 80s and 90s I was on the board so I got to know a lot about the running of the orchestra and a lot about him and we spent a lot of time together I became chairman and then going to functions with him and getting to know him more as a, as a man rather than just the, our conductor and founder. So I was a privilege, really. In a way, he's still a reminder that even at his advanced age, he, he never gives up and he never settles for less than what is a very maximum that we can produce. And that is his greatest influence. And even if we haven't seen him for a few months, he comes in and he shakes things up. We'll never settle for anything that is less than 100%.